So I got a new toy and I'm gonna share with you what it does and why I got it. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope everyone's doing well. My name is Zenzo and you are watching Tozawa Tanks. If you're new to my channel, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. So what is my new toy? Well, I actually got a uh, TDS meter. TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids. And um, you might hear that term, you know, often, and you may not know what it means. And uh, essentially, it is the dissolved solids that we find in our water. Now, you might think, well, wait a minute, water is liquid, there's nothing solid about it, you know, I can't see anything in water. But in fact, there are dissolved elements in our water and in different water bodies that we uh, encounter, fish, etc. So when we're keeping fish in aquariums and fish tanks, it is really important that we understand a few things about uh, water parameters. Obviously, uh, we need to understand what pH is about, and we also, which is the uh, acidity or the alkalinity of the aquarium, and uh, we also need to understand things like uh, ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, that, uh, so that we can ensure that we have a healthy tank. Um, but one of the things that uh, a lot of people are not very familiar with, and that is um, their total dissolved waters in their aquarium. Now there are tests that you can use that will test your GH and your KH, uh, which is uh, testing the uh, carbonate hardness of your water, um, but still a lot of people don't really understand what that means. Now one way to really get an accurate reading is to get a, a TDS meter, which is why I got one. Prior to that I was using just the test strips that would test the GH and KH, but a friend of mine actually gave me the TDS meter, so I was happy to take it off of his hands, and uh, it's actually been very helpful and beneficial to me in uh, making a few adjustments with my tanks. So when we're talking about dissolved solids, we are talking about minerals, we are talking about uh, metals and uh, salts, etc., that are naturally found in fresh water, and uh, also in, in uh, ocean water as well. So what that means is uh, when we were, when we are, you know, drinking water or if we have a fish that we find living in a lake there are minerals and salts and you know some metals etc that are in that water that are actually helpful to that fish or beneficial to us as far as drinking that water kind of like uh, when you're looking at uh, you know buying a bottle of water to drink you don't buy distilled water you are buying you know like natural spring water or filtered water rather than a distilled water so a distilled water is a water that has removed all of those dissolved elements. It's removed, you know, the potassium, the magnesium, the salts, everything like that has been removed from the water and it's just, uh, you know, H2O and, and basically nothing else. Now there are applications where that is useful. Uh, obviously for, you know, around the house, you might want to put uh, distilled water in an iron so that you don't have mineral deposits in your iron. You might use it in an automotive application where you don't want mineral deposits like in a radiator as an example. Um, and then also for aquariums, if you are doing a reef tank, so that means you're doing a saltwater tank with live corals, with live rock, etc., you don't want those elements in your aquarium water because it can be harmful to the invertebrates and the corals, etc. So a lot of people will use what is called an RODI unit, which is a, a reverse osmosis and deionized water. So it's, it's removing all of those um, elements that we find in the water so that it's just you know water in its purest form and then they would then um, add salt back into the uh, to the water to get the proper salinity and then add their other chemicals to get the right uh, amount of uh, levels of the uh, trace elements that they want to have in their tank so anyway so i got my tds meter and i was testing some of my tanks and they were pretty much where i thought they would be here in San Francisco, we kind of have a unique situation and it has been changing. So um, one of the things that I con continually do is test the water to see uh, what's happening in that in that given week or that given month because uh, sometimes they will move water uh, that we get from one supply to another. So one of the things that we have here in uh, my city is we have uh, water that has a very high pH. So I have water that's coming out of the tap at like 8.6. So for a lot of you cichlid keepers, uh, African cichlids as an example that seems like heaven um, the downside is that we also have soft water so typically when you have high pH you usually have a lot of dissolved solids in your tank water or in your tap water so you don't have to do very much you don't have to add a lot of buffers etc um, cichlid salts because your hard water is also a water with a high pH 
In our situation, it's very unique, high pH, but uh, low on the uh, low on the elements. So I actually have some water here to test. So this is uh, regular tap water that I just got out of the faucet. I'll make sure I'm drinking the right one. Just drinking it to prove that this is just regular tap water. I'll turn on my TDS meter and I'm going to test this water. And this water is showing me 66 parts per million. So it's giving me a reading, you can't really see it, but it's giving me a reading of 66 parts per million. That's pretty low. Um, that's not uh, really great for, uh, like if you're keeping shrimp as an example, um, you might find that if you have some snails, you might see that their shells might get a little soft and weak. So um, that's not great. Obviously, cichlids want to have uh, you know some um, more elements in their aquarium. And then I have another glass of water here. And this water is actually uh, essentially RO water. So I don't have an RODI unit. I don't need one because I don't keep saltwater tanks. But I do have a dehumidifier in this room that draws all of the moisture out of the atmosphere, the air, and uh, dumps it in a uh, tub thing that I have over there. So anyway, this is uh, essentially RODI water, or RO water at least. And I am going to test this. And you're going to see, or I'm going to tell you, that it is parts per million of five, four, it's four, it's bouncing between four and five. So essentially just at four. So it has four parts per million compared to 66. So that is a significant difference between tap water and, um, and the uh, water that's coming out of the dehumidifier. The reason why is the water in the air is just water, there's nothing else. It's not sitting in the ground where it's getting uh, salts and, and elements and, and minerals and, and uh, other items uh, leaching into the water. So it's just water, there's nothing there versus like groundwater, which is gonna have all of those things that I just mentioned. Now, what I'll also do is I'll test some tank water. Now, I, I do use tap water for my tanks. Um, and but I do add buffers and salts to my aquariums to uh, raise the TDS because I am keeping cichlids and also in my planted tanks I use fertilizers so we'll take a look and see what that is So both of these both of these tanks are running around 150 parts per million. So um, that's uh, pretty significantly higher than the 66 from the tap water, and uh, that actually might increase a little bit. And uh, the reason why is I just did water change down here about an hour ago, and there is still the buffer that is sitting um, in the bottom of the tank that hasn't fully mixed in yet and it hasn't fully dissolved. So I anticipate that raising to get closer to around 200 parts per million. And that's what I see in my tanks upstairs as well, my African cichlid tanks up there, where I also use salts and uh, buffers to uh, you know, add those elements to the water. So those are at uh, right around 180 to 200 parts per million. So that's probably where these tanks are gonna end up. One of the things that I did notice upstairs um, on my deck is I have my goldfish aquaponics system. And uh, that is, uh, we're in April now and uh, it, there, was a lot of rain so the rain was you know kind of refilling the uh, system and uh, rain is just kind of like the RO water because there isn't any uh, if it's falling from the sky it's not sitting in the ground so it's not collecting those minerals and so I did notice that the um, that the uh, parts per million was really low when I uh, tested the uh, goldfish pond and even though I have the water recirculating through media that media is kind of inert lava rock uh, clay based uh, uh, aquaponic soil so um, it wasn't leasing anything into the water and that was like right around 34 to 35 parts per million so really low I ended up adding some uh, some buffers and salts to that system as well not too much because I need to keep my plants healthy but a little bit more so that the fish have some minerals in their water one of the reasons why it's important to add the um, minerals back into the water is that it, it, the fish need those minerals just like you and I if we're drinking water or if we're drinking some type of uh, replenishment drink we need those vitamins and minerals back in our system to nourish our bodies. We cannot survive if we only drink distilled water alone. And the fish are the same way. They're not drinking glasses of water, but they're surviving and living in, you know, bodies of water and they are absorbing that water and their their bodies are, you know, chemically um, 
you know, taking in those elements and utilizing them for growth and sustainability. So um, it is important that if we do have a situation where we do have soft water that has been treated by humans, or if it's uh, just simply RO water or rainwater, that we do make sure that we um, add some type of trace element minerals back into the water to help the fish. So in my last experiment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of that RO water that I had, and I have some of my uh, buffer uh, stuff in here. So this buffer that I am using down here in the fish room is a uh, homemade um, recipe that consists of, um, uh, what does it have? It, ha it has uh, Epsom salts, and I have uh, marine salt and baking soda. So there's a mixture that I concocted and uh, mixed a big batch of it up and uh, it's, it's uh, just a mixture of, again, marine salt, not aquarium salt that we use for freshwater salt, but marine salt that we use for saltwater tanks. And I have a bunch of that because I do service uh, aquariums and service saltwater tanks. So it's marine salt, baking soda, and Epsom salts. And uh, I made a um, homemade buffer and uh, I use it in my cichlid tanks. And that's uh, what I'm using down here that does help in uh, raising that TDS. So I'm gonna test this water now. And again, this is not great, kind of like this situation where the uh, the uh, buffer's not fully dissolved and me just shaking this in this little uh, cup here is not going to uh, get it totally ready. But this originally was uh, four parts per million. Our tap water was 66. I'll give this a chance to settle here. And it's not working because there's a, it's kind of overloading. Um, and this happened to me before when I, um, it's kind of off the chart. So I'm gonna pour this in the glass and dilute it a little bit and see if that helps. All right, well, I had to wait a while for this to settle down a little bit, and I had to uh, actually go over there and uh, dilute it some more because it was just crazy. There was too much buffer in there. But now we are at 344 parts per million. So, um, and it's probably gonna creep up as uh, the rest of that dissolves. So anyway, it's important to make sure that uh, if you do have very soft water or if you are using RO water to make sure that you are adding some type of trace minerals back into the aquarium so that your fish can be healthy. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.